Um, it is a very good afternoon. And I've been working indoors on um, on the laptop. The back door has been open, so it's been wonderfully relaxing just listening to the sounds outside. And I switched on to Twitter for a couple of minutes to see what the what the outside world was up to. And there were some subjects trending, one of which was climate change. I didn't go too deeply into exactly what all the social media noise was about. I knew it was concerning climate change, but it was probably to do with politicians and their lack of their lack of action. And it got me thinking. It's nice not to have any kind of background noise other than Mother Earth because you pick up the energies better. You pick up what it is she's saying. And it suddenly occurred to me like a, like a bolt of lightning, like an epiphany. It was a road to Damascus moment. And again, so very simple. The issue is not climate change. The issue is our relationship with Mother Earth. The majority of humankind does not have a relationship with Mother Earth. Does not even see the living being that is Mother Earth. They see her as no more than an SUV that they're travelling in from the cradle to the grave. Or a horse and cart that they're sitting on from the cradle to the grave. It's of, She's of no significance other than what she's providing for us. It's such a one-way relationship. It's so toxic. It's so incredibly toxic. And we have only begun to consider the ramifications of our actions because there is this thing called climate change. With severe storms and severe droughts and severe heat and severe cold and all this extremity of climate and extremity of weather. So we're all focusing on climate change. Without a care or a consideration to who is carrying us. The great mothership. Mother Earth. Here she is. Here she is. This is her. This is her. She's not considered. Excuse me while I just wipe this <laughs> this lens again. There we go. I think that's it. She's not considered. So there has to be, and I've no doubt there will be, a massive change in direction of thought from climate change, which is a thing, to Mother Earth, which is a sentient being. Once we make that shift, we will begin to renew our relationship with Mother Earth. 
and we'll begin to see climate change not as something abstract or as something that's happening to someone else in some other part of the world, but as a whole reaction of us as a species living on Mother Earth. And the change will come in our understanding of how it is that we need to live with her. Now there are some who will say, oh that's an oversimplification. But I don't agree. I think that's it in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Problem and solution. And that way we come away from the finger jabbing response, the name calling response, the not in my backyard response, the it's the politicians fault response, the what's our government going to do response. It comes back to us, me, you. And how we care to live with Mother Earth. Now I'm going to go in and wash my face, brush my hair and head over to Drumshambo to see the wonderful Pascal and post some books and post some maps. and help support my local post office with your help. And Buddha sits there laughing away at the silliness of the human race. <laughs> the finger jabbing. I was just thinking about that. Um, look at that lovely dog daisy, as it's called. A beautiful look waving about in the sunshine. You see? That's Mother Earth. Look at the perfection on that. 
imperfection. And the stone here, look, sitting in the moss. And then when you think, <clears throat> when you compare this, the beauty of she, the beauty of her, to the finger jabbers, you know those who go with their finger, you know, it's your fault, it's your fault. <laughs> Right, okay. I shall remove myself from this trance-like state that I very quickly become immersed in when I step outside. Oh, look, there's a little carder bee. Look at that little, little... Oh, there's two. There's a honey bee and a carder bee. Look on there. That's interesting. Must be a hive somewhere. I think they can fly up to three miles to get nectar, to collect pollen. It's funny. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Without further ado, blessings to you all. <laughs>